Hello again guys, over the next few days I'm going to be taking you through my step-by-step -step process and how I make my survival bows and bolts. A crossbow is essentially a bow mounted on frame that's called a tiller, or as I like to call it, a stock. The bow on a crossbow is called a prod. Modern crossbows use materials like fiberglass, laminated wood or even steel. These materials can produce a lot more power at a relatively short prod length. We're making our prod out of wood, so ours will be a fair bit longer than usual. The portion of the crossbow that holds and fires the projectile is called the barrel or the track. We've got the trigger mechanism. This is what's going to fire and release the string and in turn the projectile itself. And the arrow like projectiles that a crossbow shoots are called bolts. A crossbow has quite a few advantages over a longbow. I do have a video on how I make my survival bows and arrows, so in our case a survival bow versus a survival crossbow. To use a longbow effectively, and it doesn't matter if it's a survival type bow or a 100 pound draw weight war bow, you can't just pick one up and be good within a few hours. They require a great deal of commitment and decades of practice, but a crossbow on the other hand is relatively easy to shoot and within a few hours you can become quite accurate with them. A crossbow can be sighted by looking down the bolt. You can't do this with a traditional bow that lacks a cutout. The arrow has to swim around the bow. Plus the crossbow shoots a lot flatter, shooting a much lighter projectile at a much faster speed, which allows less time for the target to move while the bolt's in flight. You can shoot a crossbow without exposing yourself like you would shoot in a bow. A bowman has to stand in the open and draw back the bow. A long bow, even a survival bow, are in excess of about five or six foot in length and require a whole body of effort to draw them back. With a crossbow, you can find a covered and seated position and still work the bow effectively. We're going to start by making the prod first, but I'm going to collect all the wood materials that I need now. When it comes to wood selection, pretty much any hardwood tree would make a bow. I want a two and a half to three inch piece of wood, as straight and as not free as we can find. I've made bows from uh, hazel, ash, maple, oak and hickory, and they all shoot hard. There are some softwoods that you can use. Use classed as a softwood and happens to be my favourite bow making material, so I'm going to make my prod from you. I have got a folding saw with me, but if all you had on you was a knife, as long as it's sharp, with a greenwood stick, you can batten V-notches straight through the limb. The end made prod will be about 80 to 100 centimetres long. I've cut mine a little bit longer. This is cut probably about 120 centimetres, but we can trim it down later on. When it comes to bolt shafts, I'm using hazel for mine. It's a strong fibrous wood and it tends to grow quite straight. There's numerous other materials that you could use. Reed stems work well, but you've got the danger of falling into the water while you're collecting them. Ash saplings make great arrow and bolt shafts. They're normally in abundance around older ash trees. The only downfall is that I'd have to take the entire tree just for one or two arrow shafts. In a survival situation, I don't care. I'd cut down the entire forest to preserve my own life or anyone else around me. All I'm doing is making a demo video, so I'm gonna stick with hazel for these ones. The hazel is a very resilient tree. When you coppice it, when you cut a limb off the tree, usually on the second spring, the cut limb will grow two new limbs either side to replace the one it's lost. I've cut a piece for the stock. I'm using hazel. You want the stock at about seven, eight centimetres thick, which is about three inch. I've done mine about one metre long. It's about 40 inches. My crossbow is going to be quite long. You can make yours shorter. I want to be able to shoulder mine like a rifle and have my head in a position where I can look down the bolt whilst I'm still uh, holding the stock nice and securely. It's the first time I've used this sort of bent stick kind of configuration. I'm going to have the trigger mechanism here. This is going to be the barrel and then we'll have the prod, the bow at the end. And I'm thinking by having this curved part, I'm going to be able to get my head down a little bit further and it'll give me a better angle looking down the bolt.
I like to buy my shafts to dry. Stops them warping out. I'm not going to be building my bolts till tomorrow, so they'll have a full day to dry next to the fire. Before I start removing material off the prod stave, I just want to show you what I'm actually removing. The prod's the same as a bow. We've got the back of the prod. This is the side that's going to be facing your target. We've got the sides of the prod, which will taper and narrow down to each end. And then we've got the belly of the prod. This is the side that's going to be facing yourself. We only want to remove material off the belly side of the prod. Okay, so the belly and the actual sides. We don't want to remove any material off the back of the prod. Any damage caused to this area could cause the prod to snap. I've used a bit of charcoal to mount the centre of the prod. This is where a bolt will be shooting along. And I've drawn a line down the entire length of the belly side of the prod. This is where my string will run along and it'll act as a guide as I'm removing material from each side of the limbs. As the bow shape starts to form, I gradually remove material, the wood will start to flex. I help it along by floor tillering it, I'm just helping getting the limbs used to bending. I'm just removing a fine bit of material at a time, flexing it, finding the stiff spots, which is one about there, and then just remove a little bit more material again. Just keep doing that until I'm happy with it. We will find tiller it right at the end once the string's on. But it's uh, starting to take shape now. We're nearly there. Now, our prod isn't quite finished yet, but I need to get it strung up. I've cut two V notches for my bowstring. They're about an inch down from the tips and angled slightly towards the centre of my prod. When it comes to a bowstring, there's dozens of materials that we could use. Non-natural types could be paracord, even three or four inner strands of paracord would work. Bank line, boot laces, strips of fabric, or maybe you're fortunate enough to have a real bow making string like Dacron, or a Dacron made string like this one. Making a bowstring from nature takes a lot more skill and effort, but there's numerous things that you could use to make one. There's dozens of plant fibers, tree barks, and animal hides that can be processed and twisted into a good strong bowstring. I'm using a squirrel rawhide bowstring on my crossbow. It's a piece I had left over from the one I made on my how to video. I've shot a good 200 arrows with that string and it's still going strong. If you're interested in how I made it, please check out my video, I'll leave a link below. If you're stringing your prod with a cordage like paracord or bank line, tie one end on, make it central to the prod. You can use any knot you want, granny knot, bow line, it doesn't really matter as long as it's secure. And then on the other end, tie a hoop. I'll get to the string length and brace height once I've finished tillering the bow. So I'm going to put the one end of the bow over the side of my foot. I'm going to step into the prod. Now normally on a long bow the handle will be up here, okay, so you support it with your thigh. Because the centre of the prod is down here, 
okay, in the sense of the handle. I'm going to use the back of my knee and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the bow in and pop the hoop on. What you want to do is just make sure that each end is seated in the knots. Hey okay, guys, I don't know if you can see that. We've got stiff spots kind of here and on the tips. So I'm just going to take a fine little bit of material off here. Just give it a bit of a scraping and then we'll see how it's going. That seems a lot better. Still a little bit stiff on the tips, so I'm just gonna give it another little scraping and then uh, we'll give it a sand down. That's it strung up with my rawhide bowstring. I don't want to damage it, so I'm going to restring it with some paracord while I test it out. That's the hardest part done. Before I go into the stock, I'm going to measure the draw length and weight of the prod. This will tell me how much power it's got. My prod, not to knock, is about 95 centimeters, which is about 37 inches. I measure the draw length first, and I measure the poundage of the bow at the same length. I'm using this to measure the poundage of the bow. It's pretty simple, you pull on it and the dial tells you the poundage. I measure the draw length first. I've got a tape measure on here. I'm just gonna draw the limbs. That's 17 inch. So again, I'm just gonna draw up to 17 inches and we'll see what the poundage is. That's saying what we're on there. Just under 65. So I'm gonna say 64. Yeah, 60, 64 pounds. So that's 95 centimeters knock to knock. 17 inch draw and uh, 64 pounds. That's not too bad. Alright guys, we're onto the stock. I'm gonna to have to trim mine down a little bit. I've marked out a four inch gap for my trigger mechanism. I know the draw of my prod is 17 inches, so I've marked out 17 inches on the barrel and I just need to trim the end piece off. Okay, that's the stock cut down. What I'm gonna do now is cut down vertically here and then notch it out. It'll be almost like a seven notch. The next job is to flatten out the barrel and carve a flight rail. 
This is where the bolt will sit and be fired from. I've used the string to give me a nice straight line. You want your bolt guide as straight and as bump free as you can. The bolt's going to be ejected down the rail at a very high velocity and a wonky bumpy rail is going to reduce the accuracy of your crossbow. Now we're on to the trigger mechanism. There's loads of different types of triggers using crossbows. Most involve steelwork materials and tools that most won't have out in the woods or in a survival type situation. The trigger I'm using on mine is very basic, but it's an easy to make trigger, it's reliable, and sometimes basic is best. The trigger's made up of two parts, the trigger and the trigger stick. You want to make these parts out of dry wood. To bind the prod to the stock, there's a few different ways we could do this. I've used a small hand drill that I keep in my trapping pouch to drill a hole through mine. Um, if you've got a couple of nails or screws, you could hammer them either side of the stock and bind your prod to that. Other than that, if you cut two steep angled seven notches into the stock itself, you could bind the prod to that. We don't want wood on wood, so I'm putting a bit of leather in between the stock and the prod.
to my bolt shafts are about an inch, inch and a half longer than the length of the barrel and the thickness of the prod. My shafts are about 18 inches long, that's about 45 centimetres. I've left the thickest of the ends flat and I've notched and tapered the other end. For the bolt tips, I'm using steel for most of mine. I've just cut and filed them to shape. There's all kinds of things you could use to make a lethal point. You could cut, fold and hammer a tin can into multiple tips. Glass works well too. And on a more natural option, you could use bone, flint or stone. When it comes to attaching the tips to the bolt shafts, I like to glue mine as well as bind them. The best natural glue for this is pine pitch, so I'll quickly show you the process of making pine pitch glue. Pine and spruce trees grow all over the world and they drip sap out of damaged areas and broken limbs. I've got my spruce resin in a can, it's on the heat and it's starting to liquefy. I've grind down some hardwood wood ash, it's got to be from a hardwood tree. For the binding material I've added a few pellets of rabbit shite. You could use goat or horse or cut pieces of dry grass or something alike. Once the resin is completely liquefied I'm going to start adding the ground ash until I get a thick paste. Once it's cooled down, you start to get this thick paste, just roll it onto the stick. Good way to test if your glue is any good. Hit it on a rock, as long as it doesn't shatter, you've done a good job. To bind our tips and fletchings to the bolt shafts, we could use string, threads from your own clothing, your own hair, inner strands of paracord, individual strands of jute twine, fishing line or something more natural like plant fibres, and that's what I'm going to use for mine. Fibres can be taken from loads of different plant stalks and vines. The common nettle grows all over the world and produces really strong fibres and binding material. You want to crush down the entire length of the stem. And then open up the stem flat. With the outer bark facing down, bend it over your finger and pull off the fibres.
and then we can pull apart the fibres and what we're left with is a really strong binding material. For the fletchings on my bolts, I'm using pheasant feathers that I harvested from birds myself. Feathers are pretty easy to find on the forest floor, but there's other things you could use. Duct tape, salad tape and card all work well. You don't want to bind your fletching straight, you want to angle them slightly. This will put a rotation on the bolt as it's flying through the air and it will just stabilise it. Not bad for my first shot. Obviously just one below it. But it's shooting straight. Okay guys, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Take care, be safe and I'll see you next time.